So it's an in, uh, well interesting and important day in um, Wiltshire's history, or the history certainly around here at the moment, because um, today, oh. being a Friday, when we record, is the day that they announce the result of the um, judicial review for the, 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 the A303 tunnel past Stonehenge. Oh, it's today, is it? It's yeah. Today. So the the result, um, the announcement is expected this afternoon, um, either three o'clock or four four thirty, depending on who you yeah. who you believe. Um, but whichever side of the fence you're on, um, whether you believe the tunnel's the right thing or not, um, it's going to be something that we'll be sort of, I think, we'll be living with for you know generations to come. If the tunnel yeah. goes ahead, it'll remove the road from the um, from the World Heritage Site, and the stones will no longer have that road going past. If the judicial review is upheld and the uh, the tunnel doesn't go ahead, then that road will stay there pretty much for generations to come. You know, I've lived here for 26 years, as you know, and uh, there's, we've been arguing about that that road ever since I've been here. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and and there is no Plan B, so it doesn't go ahead. If the tunnel doesn't go ahead, yeah. there'll be nothing. And I, and I guess it's kind of, it's probably quite important to to your life as well, given that you live in Shreeton, which is the the rat run. Yeah. Well, on a sort of more light-hearted note, I think the the, the background noise today on my audio is going to be pretty pretty grim. Um, apart from the fact it's a it's a Friday afternoon when we record, so when people listen to this on Sunday, the, the decision will be known. Um, but uh, yeah, apart from it being a, a sort of rat run Friday, um, it's every day's rat run here through here. But uh, of course, it's raining at the moment, so the noise is particularly bad from sort of hissing of tyres. But uh, anyway, I, I you know don't want to get into whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's uh, it's a very divisive issue. But um, yeah, important day. So welcome to another Hidden Wilch podcast. We are up to podcast 16, I think. We are. I can still count. Yeah. Um, my name is Glyn Coy, and um, I am the face behind Hidden Wiltshire. Um, but as this is a podcast, you can't see my face. Um, but we are joined by the dulcet tones of my um, ever-present podcasting partner. Paul Tillett. Oh, very grateful that you can't see my face. Actually, yours is. I, I can see your face because we have video going when we're recording. Well, this, we so do. Quite pixelated. Yeah, you have to. Oh, am I? Well, that's, yeah. pro- that's probably a good thing. Uh, <laughs> so, so it gets rid of all those wrinkles and yeah, infections. yeah, and the, the bits that keep falling off. But, uh, I, I mean, to be honest, it's because, uh, as I mentioned just now, the, the, the sort of background noise from outside. Um, I have to draw. I have to close the the, the, the shutters on the windows and draw the curtains. To try and block some of it out, and uh, so I have to turn the light on in here. And uh, Mike, the camera on this 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 laptop is not great in low light. So let's sum up the last two weeks in winter. Actually, it's a bit longer for us because last week's was or last bleh, the last podcast we did um, record a while ago, as we said. Yeah. Um, so it's um, it's actually been four weeks since we were here. I think. Yeah, since we spoke, that's for sure. Um, so. Yes, the reason for that, as, as uh, some people know, is that I, I've had a, a, a two or three weeks break. Um, went up to um, Shetland and Orkney. God, I forgot for a moment where I went. Um, which was, was very interesting. I put a post on the Facebook site about that, um, not to sort of hijack it and show people my holiday snaps, but to, I, I was really struck by the sort of connection between... Um, sort of Orkney in particular and the archaeology there um, and to, you know, to this part of the world. Um, so it was quite interesting to sort of see, you know, what was, what was, what was happening in Orkney in particular, um, at a place called Scarabray. Um, and then we sort of from there, we sort of went to the, the, the Ring of Brogger, Ness of Brogger and um, 
the stones of, 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 of Stennis, um, which anybody who's interested in sort of history and archaeology will no doubt have heard of. Um, there was a big sort of TV program um, with all the sort of TV archaeologists around um, the um, the Nessabroga. That was a couple of years ago, and I think then they sort of were, were making the connection between the people who inhabited that part of the world with um, Stonehenge in particular. And the thing that struck me when I was up there, as I said on the Facebook post, was um, Scarabray is a is a sort of a, a community. Uh, I hesitate to use the word village, but a settlement um, on the right on the sort of west coast of, of mainland Orkney, and it was exposed by a massive storm, uh, which I think, oh God, when was it? I forgot. When it was, I think nineteen nineties, perhaps. And it revealed this this settlement, which is the most incredible site. Um, and there are there, there are bound to be a lot more of them up there, which haven't been found yet. And I was looking at the the buildings. So basically, you've got these buildings sort of sunk into the the, the the ground. So they would have been sort of half below ground, half above. No windows, probably a, a turf roof of some sort. But there were a number of them, and they were connected by passageways. And each building had in it. Um, sort of like not bedrooms but um cut into the stone there were spaces for people to sleep little sort of sleeping areas and then there was um sort of like a display i can't describe it, it as like a display cabinet on one wall they were put there sort of utensils and even sort of little trinkets that they wanted to display um but they also had indoor toilets and underneath the settlement were, were a series of drains so this was a carefully planned settlement the drains obviously laid before the buildings built on top and that drained away these sort of indoor toilets and the, the incredible thing was this was Scarabray was first um they, they think was was you know, the building began at around 3300 BC and the bulk of it 3100 BC so that's that's five 600 years before Stonehenge was built and that was that just really blew my mind you know, we look at Stonehenge yeah. and how old that is, and yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it? Because we tend to think of the sort of Neolithic era period as a primitive period where, mm. yeah. you know, we didn't have such sophisticated things as rooms and exactly, um, exactly. toilets. That so that was more yeah. something associated with Romans that came much much later. Yeah, and you look at sort of medieval England when they had sort of sewage flowing down the middle of the streets, and that was. Yeah. But if we had a four and a half thousand years later, <laughs> it's, just, it's just stunning. But from there, I mean, well, I could go on for hours about this, but, you know, the, the, the earliest activity around the Nessabroga, which is a huge archaeological site. I mean, they're digging there every year. And, you know, the, the, the first um, the first evidence of human settlement, 5000 BC, you know, two and a half thousand years before Stonehenge. And I know Mesolithic Man was 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 in Wiltshire at that time as well. You know the hunter gatherers, um, but uh, they, this the, the, the site at Nessabroga is just remarkable, and some of the buildings are very sort of basic and, and deliberately so. They were sort of very poorly built because they knew that they would just fall down, and because you know there were no foundations and they would just collapse, and then they would build other ones on top. So the archaeologists who are trying to sort of make sense of all this are looking at layer upon layer of, of these old buildings. But some of them, the quality of the stonework is just stunning. And you, you know, there's, there's builders today who aren't building as well as these guys were you know, thousands and thousands of years ago. But um, yeah, absolutely incredible place, incredible site. Um, you know, both, both islands, you know, Shetland and Orkney, are places I'd, I'd love to return to. So, what have I been up to? Um, fair bit, actually. Um, whilst I've been holding the fort down here in Wiltshire, we had um, another hidden Wiltshire walk with the museum, the Bratton and Luckham Springs one, which was um, really good, actually, because the weather looked really ropey before, <laughs> and we were toying with the idea of cancelling it the day before um, because it was supposed to be torrential rain but actually we held off and I'm glad we did because we had no rain for the sort of three to four hour window that we um, we had Uh, it was well attended and we managed to get a good a good walk in Um, it was always always interesting going down to those springs um, and trying to imagine you know what they used to be like because when you then walk up from um, Bratton up to the church and you can see there's like a huge gorge gouged out by water that comes from the church springs 
giving rise to these really dramatic gardens and banked house, houses on banks and things, which looks quite spectacular. But the water's done um, quite a lot of erosion um, over there, carving out those bottoms and everything. Mm. Very picturesque part of the world. And you met the owner of that uh, big house, didn't you? I um, can't remember what it's called now. The mill, yeah. The mill, yeah. Yeah, we did, and he was because he owns the the springs area as well. And we've talked about some of the issues that, that have been around access rights there. But getting into the springs from um, the bottom is quite easy now because they've installed some proper gates oh, right. um, from the open access land through. Because I think before we had to climb up, clamber over a metal fence type thing. Um, but no, they've got proper latch gates now, which are great for getting on. But yeah, I, I met. Um, the owner, he was. In th- there were a couple of pump house buildings there that the water board used to use. Um, I think they were built in the Second World War because they used to pump water from the springs over to Kievel Airfield. Um, and when the water board moved out and decommissioned them, um, they sold the land back to the owner of the mill. So th- you've got these pump houses there, and he was saying that he was um, he's applied for planning permission to convert them into. Like dwellings um, that he's going to use as sort of an Airbnb type rental place, so really? a bit of a bolt hole. <laughs> <laughs> to, um, it'd be interesting trying to sort of carry your suitcases there because um, yeah, there's no road, not, not even no a road. track. No, there's barely a path <laughs> through the woods and by the stream. Yeah, yeah, but I believe there's as much there's as much below ground as there is above ground in those buildings. Oh, um, so they're quite fascinating. There'll be a bit of a uh, you know very characterful. Um, place to stay, I would think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But uh, yeah, as you say, access will be. Oh, God knows how that's going to work. Yeah. Um, the other thing I did is I, I put a blog post up on the, the, the Hidden Wiltshire website outlining a new walk that I'd um, come up with around Beckhampton Gallops. Um, there's a whole piece of land there that runs from the Beckhampton roundabout over towards Cheryl Down. Um, which is used for a mixture of horse race training and um, agriculture. But it's surrounded by a sort of ridge. Um, So I sort of followed a path along the ridge around the back and then came back along the Roman road. It was a really very nice walk, actually, some fantastic views. Um, So I was quite pleased with the photographs from that. Yeah, no, they look look great. I've done sort of a slightly different version of that walk. And like you, it was... um, I saw hardly anybody there. So is it Ranscombe Bottom that's up near Cheryl Monument? Yeah, it's the other side of um, Cheryl Down. Um, mm. And it's like a, a deep dip at the, below Cheryl yeah. Down that takes you into quite a sort of... Um, quite a nice bottom, actually. Talking yeah, of Wilshire Bottoms a, again. It's a, it's a lovely one, yes. Yeah, so I think I, I did... the. I parked the same place as you and then walked along the, the sort of top of the gallops, but I then carried on a bit and ended up in Ranscombe Bottom, kind of back round. So it was a slightly extended um, version of the, the yeah. walk you did. But as I came back through across the gallops and what have you, I don't think I saw anybody. It was, it was just stunning. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing I've done lately is um, I've got my drone back out again. And yeah. i some filming this year. Um, so I was up at... Um, Alton Barnes um, and Milk Hill last week with it. Um, so I, I, I flew it up. I, I, I actually went to David Carson's house and flew it from his garden. Um, all the way up to the top of the, had it the hills? So- no, not not all the way to the oh, top right. of the hills. No, just over the villages. Yeah. Um, and it was sort of circling around the villages. And at the time, David was, I think he had a, a church meeting going on in someone's garden and Apparently they were all looking up, thinking, "What yeah. the heck's that?" And he was going, "Don't worry, it's all in hand." <laughs> I know what that all is. On, yeah, all I had under this control. Drone circling, <laughs> yeah, circling at four hundred <laughs> feet over the villages. Um, but yeah, but the next, I did did it over two days. I did that the villages one day, then I went up onto the hill the next day. Um, was that the day I was up there pulling ragwort with Natural England? Guys. The day before. Oh, the day before that was right. Yeah. yeah. The day before. Yes. Yeah, so. so if you go back now, you'll yeah. find certainly a couple of fields. Um, depleted of, of yellow weeds or flowers, however you view ragwort. Well, yes, yeah, a really good um, good effort to get rid of that ragwort. It seems to be everywhere at the moment, um, more than usual. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it's a bit like sort of poppies and orchids. You know, fantastic year for orchids. Not so many poppies, but fantastic year for for, for ragwort. Um, it's quite sort of not depressing, but you know, as we've, we've we pulled it, we cleared a gully 
up there um, on the side of Milk Hill and um, Stevie who's the the um, Natural England Reserve Manager up there just said well the depressing thing is uh, boys and girls that uh, this will all be back next year mm. but, but I mean you know short of spraying it which nobody wants to do it's, uh, I mean we don't clear all of it I mean you know it's actually quite attractive to look at but we just need to try and keep it under control yeah, yeah. especially if a farmer's going to sort of mow the field and use it for it, hay and the ragwort gets in the hay and that can be quite dangerous for, for livestock um, anyway anything else to report week. no oh, not really okay. um, I think we can go on to this week's subject um, yes which is Well, what are we going to call it? Golden balls, you wanted to call it. Yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm such a headline grabber, aren't I? Yeah, and golden balls, and we're not talking about um, footballers here. We're no, talking yeah. about a hill. Absolutely. Right, let's get on with it. Okay, so golden balls. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're not calling it golden balls. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it reminds me of a holiday camp. It's, yeah. In fact, there, there is a, there's a holiday camp somewhere. I think it's in Dorset or Hampshire. It's called Sandy Balls. When, when I, I, I can never go past that without giggling. Do, I mean, in all seriousness, though, that seriousness, we, we are going to cover a, or t- talk about an area where there is a hill called Golden Ball Hill. Yes. Um, yeah. I've got no idea what the, what the origin of that name is. No. In fact, the aforementioned David Carson, I think he did tell us, but I can't remember what he said. Um, but yeah, so we're, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, the sort of eastern end of the Pusey Downs, um, sort of starting at Knapp Hill. Uh, across to Golden Ball um, and Draycott Hill and then over to sort of Hewish and all and, and return. But I'm following a walk that I did in March 2019. So if you want to look at the, um, the the walk description, um, that was dated the 24th of March 2019. Um, and then I updated it um, on the 22nd of December 2020 because I got something completely wrong, um, which I will come on to the other type part of the title of the um the walk was was medieval shore so um my objective in this walk was to try and find the abandoned village of of, of shore which is medieval um and i made a complete hash of the whole thing um in my defense the weather was just biblical um, and it was the, the weather that day was a little bit like it is today um, howling gale driving winds I'm not really sure why I went up there um, I, I, sort of the, the, the optimist in me which doesn't appear very often um, thought that it might clear but it was just epic um, so that's I, that's your excuse for giving out duff information though. yes yes and it's probably god knows how many people have sort of gone up to what turned out to be an iron age settlement thinking it was the medieval shore when it wasn't uh for which i apologize if if those couple of people did do that um but i was actually following um somebody else's walk i found a walk online and uh i thought well i'll, I'll, I'll do that and they also sort of directed me to the wrong place um but i had with me you know as usual sort of map and compass apart from sort of using my phone uh but the wind was so strong i mean it was sucking my eyeballs out never mind opening up a map and looking at a map and as i described on the 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 blog um there was a a helicopter passing over my head one of these big navy um helicopters and um 
it was it was almost stationary. I mean, it wasn't because it was hovering. It just wasn't making any headway into this wind. And then it would turn and then go back at a sort of almost supersonic speed as it picked up the tailwind <laughs> and then turn around and creep back towards me. And I'm sure he was looking at me thinking, what's that idiot doing down there? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to read a map. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, the walk started at um, up on the, the, the top of that road that goes from Alton Barnes over to um, Lockeridge. I can never remember the name of the road. And there's a car park up there. So you've got on the one side of the road, you've got um, Walker's Hill and Adam's Grave. And on the other side, you've got Knapp Hill. And it's quite a popular park in space. Yeah, I think it's called, Pew- it's called the Pusey Downs Car Park yeah, on the, the yeah. map. Yeah, um, so I think you're right. Um, and uh, that, that's where I parked. And I headed off sort of east from there. And um, I think when I when I changed the walk, when I changed the description in December 2020, basically I sort of, from the route map, I took out the bit that went to what I thought was, was Shaw and basically sort of said, look, you know, if you want to try and find Shaw, then it's kind of, it's over there. But otherwise I turned it into something different and just left out Shaw completely. Um, Shaw is still, um, I, I think I've since discovered um, where you can actually see remnants of the old settlement at Shaw, and the, it, it, it's built, or the Wandsdyke um, passes through it, um, or the village was built on the Wandsdyke, um, and there. And I'm not going to try and explain it now because it's quite complicated. But um, there are sort of there is evidence of some sort of settlement um, not far from Shaw House, which you'll see on the on the map. Yeah, you can see the earthworks of the village on the one to twenty five thousand yeah, map. Correct. It's marked on there. But it looks like there's no path that takes you into that area, is that? Uh, on private land. No, I, I from memory and I'm not looking at a map at the moment, um you can walk along there. But, right. And it was either a path or it was open access. I think there was a path there and it's probably the one stike path. Oh yeah, the one stike path. That the one stike path that doesn't go along the one stike. That's the one, yeah. Um, and the only reason I, I, I believe it is there is because of um, Andrew Rumsey, um, the, the, the Bishop of, of Ramsbury, uh, and his Instagram feed, and he did a, a, a one of his little YouTube videos from the abandoned village of, of, of Shaw, and he was sort of pottering around up there, and I thought, I recognise that, that's where I was. Um, but I hadn't realised that what I was looking at was 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 Shaw, right? Um, but as David Carson told us, I mean, much of Shaw. I mean, obviously, it's not just a one building. It was um, over. It covered a reasonable area. Um, part of it has been cultivated, and basically, it's a ploughed field. Um, so mm. there's not really anything to see. Um, and I'm not sure if that's part of the land that he tenants or or, or not but um, he was quite happy for us to go over and have a look but I don't I really don't think there's anything to see yeah. apart from this one place where the sort of the, the Wandsdyke um, goes goes through it but I think that is where they've recently completed some archaeological work yes um, it is on the Wandsdyke, the Wandsdyke yeah. yeah so it might have been around the the, the, the village the settlement um and for those that uh, don't know about this, they're trying to um, establish definitively and once and for all what the Wandsdyke or what it was built for. What is it? Why was it built? Because there's sort of three theories which we've covered before, but um, they've got some sort of new uh, techniques that they're using to try and identify what it is. And I think later on this year we'll we'll get to find out the results of that that, that work. Yeah, I think I think the primary. Um, goal on this dig was to at least date it yes because we don't even have a date for the one stike that's right um so i think that will that will you know open up you know quite a lot of different quite a lot of interpretation i think once you have that date and mm. an understanding about um you know what what period of the, the medieval times that, that that it was built in yeah yeah but um before we sort of leave Shaw, it's quite an interesting little place, and it must have been um, quite a hard life for the people that lived up there. Um, so, in it, it's mentioned in the Doomsday Survey, of eighteen oh sorry, eighteen ten eighty whatever it was, ten eighty six, um, 
1377 I read that there was only three poll tax um, payers registered in, in the, 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 the settlement, which was the lowest of any settlement in, in Wiltshire. Um, and then by sort of early 15th century, um, you know, sort of 1400 and something, it, it seems to have been abandoned. And I think it was only ever about 12 to 20 sort of inhabitants up there. But it's 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 a pretty wild place to live, um, so it's no surprise that it was abandoned. And I think it was absorbed into as a parish is the wrong word, but I think it was absorbed into sort of Alton, what was called Alton, which was basically yeah. Alton Barnes and Alton Priors, um, and, and and maybe people just sort of decided to abandon it and go and live in one of the Alton villages. I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's pretty pretty bleak up there at mm. the best of times. Um, I yeah. can imagine in the winter it's a pretty unforgiving place. Yeah. And, of course, you know, I'm not quite sure where the water supply would have come from up there yeah. either. Uh, so fr- from that Pusey Downs car park, basically what I did was I just headed up and over, um, or actually I went round Knapp Hill um, and then headed along the escarpment, so towards Golden Golden Ball, um, and you know the the again, this is these are places that have been inhabited since the first sort of settlements in in, in Wiltshire. Um, I think Knapp Hill, the, the first one you come to, is slightly younger as a as a site than Golden Ball. Um, so Knapp Hill is a, is a, a Neolithic causeway enclosure, um, dates back to about three and a half to four thousand BC. Um, and then within that enclosure, there's, they found um, some, some late Bronze Age round barrows. So again, one of these places that was occupied for you know, generations, thousands of years. Um, Golden Ball is even older. Um, there, they discovered uh, three late Mesolithic dwellings there, which are very rare. It's very rare to... to, to um, yeah. to discover Mesolithic dwellings because of course Mesolithic people were hunter gatherers so these mm. are the first signs of people sort of settling in one place um, and yeah, from what I've read that that's, goes back to about four, four and a half, you know, 4,500 BC and they found um, some flint floors up there um, suggesting some sort of fairly long term settlement with sort of post holes and, and a half and um, you know these people who were sort of transitioning from hunter gathering, and this is late Mesolithic, so moving from hunter gathering towards settling, and up on the, the hills there, they'd have looked down on the sort of Pusey Vale, which would have been pretty thickly forested, and these are the places that they would have gone sort of hunting and gathering yeah. uh, before sort of settling up there. Um, but that that whole escarpment is just uh you know you will get you really get a sense of isolation up there and although it's popular with with people you know walking on there uh every time i've been and i've been many many times you don't see many people you know two or three at the most yeah um, mainly people sort of walking their dogs up from the, the, the car park and they do a quick sort of scoot along the escarpment yeah. back back to the car park um but you then, from Golden Ball, you come to you cross Draycott Hill, um, and then Gopher Wood, um, and Gopher Wood is is that I, I think we, I and others posted pictures of the the photographs of the, the bluebells in Gopher Wood from early this year, um, and you know the, the bluebells there were just absolutely astonishing, and you know I think we we've sort of tossing a coin as to which was the best site for bluebells this year but for yeah. me that was the, the best site just because it was it's not a huge area but they were so intense the colors were so intense it was and and long lasting they were they they carried on for weeks and weeks and weeks yeah it's really nice when you can get them concentrated so the the color mm. all blends in it's yeah. like a carpet isn't it it is yeah um of course you're not too far there from westwards to the north which again is a exactly. popular bluebell yeah. Bluebell Wood, yeah. um, and actually West Westwards is where they discovered that the the sarsens for Stonehenge was sourced from. Yes, um, so quite a significant area here. Yeah, and it's uh, going back to Andrew Rumsey. I think um, you know the, the the bishop. He posts a lot of uh, videos on on YouTube from around there, and he sort mm. of ex- explores Westwood 
um, quite quite frequently. And it's it, uh, although I didn't go over to Westwood on that walk, I have done since. Um, yeah. You know, it's well, I don't know what is it half a mile from from Gopher Wood, so it's very easy to take um, both woods in. Um, but uh, yeah, on, on, on this particular walk, I sort of skirted. Um, the northern side of, of Gopher Wood, um, and at this point you are above the village of or the hamlet of Hewish, which is at the bottom of the, the escarpment, um, which I was, you know, I'll come on to a bit later. But I sort of carried on, stayed up high on, in the in the hills, skirted north of um, Gopher Wood, and you sort of come down, um, you start to descend into a. a um, sort of valley or a gully that comes up from Hewish and uh, it was I, what, what I read the, the, I think the, the, the route that I was trying to follow and kind of abandoned um, they called it a spaghetti junction of, of, of routes up there uh, and it really is I mean you've got um, there's a sort of finger post um, on the edge of, of Gopher Wood and you've got signs to the White Horse Way, the Mid Wilts Way, Tan Hill Way and I think there was maybe one other and they all sort of meet at this this, this crossroads yeah. um, and whilst the, the long distance footpaths are a relatively recent thing people had sort of joined joined them together and strung them out I mean clearly it was you know, it must have been an important junction going back you know, hundreds if not thousands of years, yeah. different sort of ancient routes crossing the, the our, our part of the world. Um, one, one of the paths you you, you um, and my walking buddy Stu and I went back some um, sometime last year, I think it was, or maybe in the beginning of this year. And from that point, from that spaghetti junction, we headed north up into um, uh, Westwoods. Um, so it kind of goes north up that way, it goes south, it drops down the gully into to the hamlet of Hewish, behind you, back towards um, you know the Pusey Downs, um, and then ahead of you, heading east, which is the way I went. Um, so you're following. I think the finger post signposted it, White Horse Way and the Tan Hill Way. You're heading up Hewish Hill, basically. You're heading east, um, so you're yeah. kind of climbing again. Um, you know, earthworks a go go up there. You know, lots of signs of, of ancient settlements, which I can't even begin to, you know, know what they, what they yeah. were. There's a ton of stuff out there. I know I've been over the other side of the valley from there when I've been walking from Martin Sale Hill mm. across. Again, you join up with the White Horse Trail past an earthwork called Giant's, Giant's Grave. And if you look yeah. across there to Hurish Hill, you see these earthworks. Yeah. Absolutely astonishing earthworks in the side of the hill. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, uh, it, I mean, all these climbs, uh, or certainly up Hewish Hill, it's quite a stiff climb. Um, so I was sort of puffing and blowing by the time I got up to the, the, the top. Yeah, the, con the contours on the map are pretty extreme. Though. Yeah, yeah. Um, and once you get up to the top of Hewish Hill, uh, again, I, I read a little bit earlier that there was... Um, there was a, there was a village up there, or maybe village is too grand a term. Might have been a sort of hamlet. There are a few houses up there, including my my favourite hill house in Wiltshire, Hewish Hill House, which, um, as far as I can tell, is owned by um, you know an ex or current I don't know what he's commodity trader. You know, aren't they all? Um, but yeah. uh, you know, he's got a very 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 nice house up there with the, just the most incredible views in Wiltshire I think f from a house anyway absolutely stunning really sort of commanding views and it's tucked away as well so it's very private which is nice for them uh, and it's not it's not a massive house um, and they've got clearly they've, they've chosen it for its location and, and good on them you know. um, but in, and there's, there's a couple of other houses up there but I, somewhere around there there was a, an ancient settlement which was inhabited for a long, long time, um, and I think I read that it's, it's certainly there was evidence of a prehistoric settlement up there. Whether that's, you know, bronze or Iron Age, I, I, I don't know. Um, but the, the the hamlet of or the village of of, Hill, of, of Hewish Hill apparently was abandoned, and I think people must have moved down the hill to where Hewish is now and the, the church is now. Um, but the route that I took uh, was I got to sort of right 
if you're following the escarpments that I've been describing, so across Knapp Hill, Golden Ball, Draycott Hill, um, around the, the, the wood, if you carry on just up Hewish Hill, follow the escarpments, so keep kind of close to the edge of the escarpments so you get those views to the south, um, you kind of reach a point where you can't go any further east and it sort of swings north. But from there, there's a very, very steep um, path that drops down to, to all. And I mean, it's it's crazy steep. And, and, and my, the, the, the current Mrs. Timlet, who uh, suffers from terrible vertigo, um, she really struggled going down there when when she and I went up right. there. Um, she, she uses sort of walking poles, and she really needed it um, going down there. Um, but there was a, a bench which I put a photograph of it in the, um, the in the blog that I wrote that just sits near some. Oh, it's about two thirds of the way up that that hill. Mm-hmm. And it's a fantastic place. If you're coming up the other way, yeah. uh, and you've almost got your nose pressed to the the, the face of the the, the the incline, it's so steep. It's a great place to stop and just you know draw breath and yeah. take in the scene. Um, and I think as bad as the weather was the day I went, I think it sort of calmed down a bit, and I sort of stopped there for a, a welcome rest and a, a cup of coffee. But again, you sort of got the views up there down over all village and. You know, which is basically the direction you're going to be be heading. Um, so I sort of headed down into all, and um, when you get to the bottom, you can you, there's, there's a little road where you can sort of you can hang a right and go um, into the village or into the hamlet of Hewish, but it's worthwhile just going left um, past the little primary school in all onto the, the the main road up from Pusey to um, Marlborough. Is that the A three four five? whichever road that is um, and just just sort of follow that past the old pub which sadly is, is now closed uh, and then do another right and it takes you that will bring you round to the edge of um, Orr House um, which is well worth a, a look and you sort of walk along the edge of the across some meadows but you can look back at uh, Orr House which is an incredible looking place I mean it was built in 1740 or they started to build it in 1740 I mean it's huge uh, very I mean it wouldn't be out of place in you know a smarter part of London and it was built for a, a London wine merchant apparently um, and it is now owned and occupied says he she's looking at his notes which I've forgotten to highlight. Um, but it's owned by a guy who... And I'm stalling here. <laughs> um, I'll find it in a sec. But the guy who owns it was uh, a director, or is a director, of Jar... Oh, here it is. Um, Sir Henry Neville Lindley Keswick. That's a name. There's a name to conjure with. Who he used to own the Spectator magazine, oh, right. um, and he is or was the chairman of a company called Jardine Matheson Holdings. Now, if anybody knows anything about Jardine Matheson, it's a, a trading company which goes back hundreds of years, um, and it was a trading company with, with sort of strong. I think it may even have been established in Hong Kong, uh, but strong sort of connections with that part of the world. Um, and uh, in the grounds or part of the the, 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 the land that falls within uh, the ambit of um, uh, uh, of or the orbit of, of, of Orr House there's Orr Pavilion which is the most incredible looking structure and we'll see that as we go on the walk and we're back on the hills and it looks like um, it looks like a, a, a a, a big sort of pi- pyramid what well, looks like a tent it looks like a wigwam uh, right but it was built um or was designed by a, a chinese architect a quite famous chinese architect called i m pi or pei p e i uh, in 2003 so this is the reason for me talking about this chinese connection this far east connection right um uh, but it's the most remarkable looking place um but we'll, we'll come back to that cuz we'll, we'll we'll see it better later on but all, all house, all house. It mm. says on Wikipedia. I'm looking at it now. It says it was largely remodelled in the 1920s by the architect Clough Williams Ellis. Oh, Clough Williams Ellis. 
Never heard yes. of it. Never heard of this. <laughs> so Clough Williams Ellis was the architect behind Port Merion. Oh, the village of Port Merion in North Wales, yeah. God, he was barking mad, he really was. <laughs> yeah, so there you go, a Wiltshire connection. Yeah, to... I didn't know that at all. No, nor did I. And I, I do wonder what All House is now. I mean, apart from being this, this chap's with a fantastic name, uh, he's, he's home, presumably. Um, there's always a lot of people sort of um, from seemingly, you know, a multinational sort of community there. There's always people of all sorts of different colours and ethnicity wandering in the gardens there. And, and you can go into part of the gardens, but not all of it, and they all seem to have come from the house. So... I don't think it's a hotel, so I wondered if it was some sort of educational establishment or maybe it's back to his sort of Far East connections, global connections, I don't know. Oh. I've, I've, I've not really discovered what, what, what it is. Um, there's always a lot of people sort of wandering around the, 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 the private bit of the gardens. Oh, must, must have some kind of event going on. Yeah. Thing going. yeah. But as you walk across the... Um, you're now sort of heading in the direction of, of Hewish um, across some water meadows, which in wet weather are an absolute quagmire. I mean, it's a, it's a, a welly boot job. But there's some beautiful trees in the sort of parklands around there. Um, and it's well worth sort of looking at those and sort of spending some time in, in, in the meadows there. Um, but you then get to the hamlet of, of Hewish and you come out onto this little road that I mentioned earlier on where where we turned left to go past the school. Um, you come out, if, you, if you'd have turned right, it's the same road that leads into Hewish, and you come out onto that. And again, absolute quagmire all around there. And the, um, the, the footpath, you basically, you, you cross the road and into what looks like somebody's garden, and it looks like somebody's garden, because it is. It's the, um, it's the garden of Hewish Manor Farm, um, now, the first time I did the walk, I sort of missed the, 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 the sign, and I thought, oh, I thought I can't be up there because I'm going into somebody's garden. Um, so I did walk down the road a little bit, and I'm glad I did because just opposite um, Hewish Manor, um, and there was a, a funny little gate, and it said something like, um, you know, failure to for people who don't. You know, walkers who don't close the gate will be fined four shillings or something like that. It was quite amazing. Right. But I, I was looking across to my left and there was a little copse and I could see this, this deer, quite a big deer, peering out from behind a tree and it was sort of looking at me and I didn't have my binoculars with me. So I stood at this gate and I'm looking at this deer. I thought, what the earth is that? It looks like a red deer. And then I saw another one. You could see the back end of a deer from behind of a tree. And I stood there and I stood there and these things just didn't move. And I thought, Christ, they're really sort of very wary of me. And then I realised that they weren't alive. They were, these these right. were statues, these were like, like sculptures. But they were so lifelike. And this blooming thing was sort of staring at me and <laughs> it wasn't real. But it really took me in. It's, it's um, very, very lifelike. Um, but it's worth just, I think you only walk down, I don't know, 20, 30 metres to sort of see that but you go, if you go back up and through this garden it's well worth going through the garden I mean it's just they've, they've, they've really sort of taken well they've made the most of having a public footpath through their garden so you've got um, there's a little miniature Avebury ring you know stone circle in the garden um, there's all sorts of weird sculptures and if I remember rightly a little sort of like Japanese bridge I mean it's beautiful um, and the planting's fantastic and then you sort of you, you, you come out on the other side um, of the garden um, up near the church at Hewish and there's a, a seven foot chicken by a pond right <laughs> I mean took a double take <laughs> so having having seen these these fake deer I and mean, then come across this chicken um, and it's just standing by what well, chicken is like a it's a you know, a, a rooster uh, standing by this pond and I just thought what on earth is going on here um, but you sort of, as I say, you tip out next to this um, track that goes up to Hewish Church and, and, and to the farm. And I, in fact, I've just been swapping messages with somebody this morning on the Facebook group uh, about that church at, um, uh, at, at, at Hewish. And she said, oh, you know, have you been in there? Because it's a beautiful little church. Because I, I put a post up the other day about the the church at Manningford Bruce, which I, I've only just been to for the first time. And she said, oh, you must go and look at the one at Hewish. And um, 
when, when I was there, I, th I think it was locked um, in 2019, or I re didn't really have time to, um, to 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 go into it. So I'm, I'm told that is well worth a, a visit. Um, and it's one of these places you you'll have to go on foot because there's really not anywhere to park around there. The lanes are yeah. really really narrow. Um, you know, you you can't stop without obstructing, you know, the occasional passing tractor or inhabitant. Um, so, you, but it's it, you know, it it's much better on foot anyway. So, well worth. I mean, it, it, it sounds it sounds amazing. Um, it it really does fit the um, definition of hidden Wiltshire. Oh, absolutely. Um, finding these little little gems tucked away and and just just random things like a seven foot rooster is um, yeah yeah very quirky yeah. That, that's just what I, I mean at the time when I was sort of you know we weren't doing this, this podcast and I was just doing the odd thing on the the blog site I thought this definitely fits the bill <laughs> yeah <laughs> slightly eccentric Wiltshire as well by the oh god yeah um but if if you um you right next to the church there is a natural England sign um so you're so you you kind of cross the fields uh and what you're going to do is basically head back up onto the um to the escarpment back up into the hills so what you could do and if you look at a map you're heading back up to Draycott Hill um, to the west of, of Gopher Wood I mean you could from the church you could just walk past the church and follow the track which takes you up to Spaghetti Junction at the top there mm. you could go that way um, and you know if it's the right time of year and there's bluebells that might be a, a better way to go and it's it's a real sort of old hollow way it's really cut deep into the the, the landscape um, and that would be a nice way to go back up. But when I went, I just sort of headed past the church, heading west, um, and then got to the, the foot of the, the, the hill where you kind of hang a right and you just go pretty much up and curve round to the right. And again, very, very steep. I mean, it's it's not for the faint-hearted. Um, you know, my, my, my wife got up it okay despite her vertigo, but it's just bloody hard work. Yeah. Um, and then once you reach the top, and and you'll see uh, on the blog post, I took a photograph of a quite an old finger post that's, that's up there, sort of leaning at a very jaunty angle, um, and you sort of reach the finger post. And really from there, it's a question of retracing your steps back across Draycott Hill, across Golden Ball, and uh, back to Knapp Hill and back to the car park. Um, and, and, and that's when I sort of actually visited Knapp Hill um, you know, there was, there was by this time it was. It took me a long time to do this walk because I spent hours blundering around in the wrong place looking for shawl, <laughs> and I, I wasted so much time doing that. So it was getting dark by the time I got back to Nap Hill, um, and there was when I got back to the car. I remember looking back up, and there was it was, uh, you know, it was it was quite murky, and there was just a guy, one guy up there on Nap Hill, and you know, for quite he, he made for quite a ghostly figure. Apart from the fact you had a dog with him, but um, mm. a bit like your um, your jaunts up Furs Knoll of late. Um, oh yeah, in, yeah. in the evening, um, you know, I I, I I'd quite happily go up Nap Hill, but the, you know, y you would certainly get a, a, a sense of the ghosts of those that lived there. Yes, you know, seven thousand years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably it's, it's, it's probably a nice place to go to around dusk, as the Sun sets up there, and mm. um, it's got an atmosphere to it. Really has. Yeah, the last time I was up there in the evening, I think um, I think you and I might have been to see David Carson in Alton Barnes because mm. um, I, I I went up there to try and get some pig pictures, thinking I could get a picture of Alton Barnes, but you can't kind of see it because it's round a corner. But I was taking some pictures of Woodborough Hill up there, and my god it was cold it was i mean i i as I've sort of described before trying to take photographs in biting cold you've got to take your gloves off to feel the controls of the we, camera that that must have been the day we were sort of sheltering in barns in alton barns with that's snow right. flurries flying yeah, around yeah, us that's and, it that's it yeah uh, and it was just absolutely bitter up there it's so exposed yeah but it's, that's why it's so wonderful that's why i love it up there yeah you know, one really of my favorite wild. parts of wheelchair so how long is this walk, do you reckon? Oh, about 50 miles, I think, judging by yeah. how long it took me. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? I don't know. I, I, I think I... Did I did I mention it in the blog? Um, 
it, but again, it's one of those things you don't have to do the whole thing. You can just yeah, cut, you can shorten cut it. Cut it short. Um, it's. I, I think if you're going to do Hewish and or it's worth doing when it's a bit drier. Yeah. Um, cro- crossing those those meadows by uh, between or and Hewish is pretty miserable when it's wet and when yeah um, when my wife Julie and I did it. Um, it was bloody wet. It was. I think we were both wearing wellies, and um, you know, you, it, was, it was it was a true water meadow. Um, so do it, do it when it's dry. Um, maybe do it when the bluebells are around, and you walk back up to the hills through Gopher Wood. Um, but it's well worth a visit just to see those sort of those little hidden gems of the, the seven foot rooster and the the deer that aren't deer. Fantastic. But I, if I had to guess, I would say. I don't know, six, six, seven miles, something like yeah. that. But, um, and you could extend it, actually. Look at the map. You oh, could yeah, extend yeah. it. And going all the way over to sort of Martin Cell Hill that way and do, it even, do an even bigger loop. Yeah. Um, that's, the, a, a, that's a tough climb again up to Martin Cell yeah. Hill. I mean, you'd really feel it if you did all those in one day. Yeah. But um, I, I, I always think of it sort of Martin Cell and around there as being a, 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 diff, a, a separate walk. And it's got its set, you know, its own history, and I think the last time I did that one, I parked in all and then walked up to the west of the A three four five, yeah, up through there up to Hewish, and then sort of hung a right, recrossed the A three four five, and over to Martin Cell that way across All Hill. Yeah, maybe Martin Cell Hill that side. We can do that in another podcast. Yeah, actually. yeah, there's plenty yeah. to go out there for, for yeah. sure. Anyway, that's Golden Balls or Sandy Balls or Shore or whatever we're going to call this. <laughs> we're going to have to come up with a name before we post it. <laughs> but isn't that, isn't that amazing? I mean, that we've already talked about um, the other side of the Pusey Downs and how picturesque that is over Milk Hill and Tan Hill and over that way. But it's great to go, you know, the other direction yeah, um, yeah. and take into account those other escarpments and hills which... Uh, Probably not as well walked, but um, absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I think as I said earlier on, a lot of people they go so far, they park at Beauty Downs car park, yep. and then go so far to and come back. Uh, and of course, from, from that car park, you could head north. You could head up towards yes. Shore and all around there. I mean, the possibilities are endless. They really are, and that's why you can get away from you know, far from the madding crowds. Uh, it's very easy to to find sort of. Yeah, and of course that's quiet. that. That's quite close to the the old Ridgeway as well, mm-hmm. that, that yep, yep. runs from north to south, absolutely, and joins up around the car park. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, and, and just, uh, I mean, the sort of thing I normally mention at the end of the podcast, but um, but that bit of music as we came into the walk, um, Steve Steve Dixon's music, um, it's actually called Gatherings, and I sort of I picked that because I just. It, it kind of echoes of maybe what would have happened on in those hills thousands of years ago, you know, those gatherings of, of, of people. And of course, some of these places weren't necessarily settlements. They were places where people met and gathered. And so that, um, you know, that, that piece of music just sort of, um, the, the, the title sort of jumped out at me. Yeah. And it's interesting because as, as the Ridgeway drops down by the Pusey Downs car park, you can just imagine that that was a, <clears throat> an important intersection where, People would, um, you know, be gathered and and, yeah. and meet and yeah. So quiet now, though it's hard to imagine. But yeah, yeah. it must have been a fascinating place in the past. Actually, um, before we, well, as part of I suppose sort of closing remarks, and we've got a few to cover. So, but I'll, I'll jump straight to this if I can. Um, you know, mentioning Steve for a moment there, um, Steve Dixon. Um, so, you know, as ever, we're grateful to him for the music. Um, but after you appeared on BBC Radio Wiltshire, you spoke to the producer, didn't you? About and, yes. And they want to get Steve Dixon on. Yes. Um, so I had a, a very pleasant few hours drinking coffee with Steve in Devizes yesterday. Uh, so that'll be Thursday. Um, yeah. And I was asking him about that. And um, I think, I don't know if he's got a date yet, but um, he's certainly got a, a, a theme and a subject that he's going to, talk to him about and one of the pieces of music that he composed a few years ago was um uh god what's it called something like barns and barns and downs barns and hills or something like that i i, I, 
I should know. Um, but he composed it uh, after a visit to the old barns you know, where the Science Museum store is, just south yes. of, um, of, of Swindon. Um, yeah. It was around there. And um, I think he's hoping to do a sort of like a joint thing, BBC Radio Wheelchair and um, the Science Museum, because they're having a big clear out out there, a big reorganisation. Right. So Steve was telling me he was hoping to sort of combine it all. Um, but that's fantastic for Steve, and that'll be well worth a listen. Um, and I know he's sort of busily... He's, he's bought a new instrument, and he did tell me what it was, and I thought, what on earth is that? <laughs> um, it sounds like a steel guitar, which I love. Right. Um, sort of echoes of um, Rai you know, for people who know who Rai Kuda is, and, and the, the film yeah. Paris, Texas. It's one of my favourite pieces of music ever. So it's one of those. So he's sort of he's going to he's enthused to start composing and recording again. So we can look forward to some some more new music soon. Oh, that's great. So, shall we wrap up? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to go through your list? You've got a list, haven't you? Yeah, I've got a few things. Um, next, Hidden Wiltshire Museum Walk, hills above Eddington. And as I say that, I'm thinking, what date is that? <laughs> yes, fourteenth um, of August. <clears throat> at 2.30pm. So on that we're going to start at the Priory in Eddington and um, head up into the hills and do a sort of circular route up on um, the edge of Salisbury Plain. Uh, so tickets are available for that at the usual place. Um, if you go to Wiltshire Museum website, um, there'll be links to um, sign up for that particular walk. Is um, David Dawson joining us? For that yes. One? Brilliant. Yes. Okay. Um, so he'll be bringing his usual... Um, bag of tricks um he occasionally brings stuff from the museum that's been found in the places where we walk mm. um but he's also very good at pointing out things in the landscape um so very interesting it's not just a walk it's history as well and archaeology um which makes it um very interesting actually so um the other thing i wanted to just mention give you a quick plug for the hidden wiltshire shop um which i should have been doing every podcast but for some reason i keep forgetting um, we do have a shop which um, where we sell stuff that helps us um, keep the lights on. Um, so just wanted to give a plug for that. Um, and what else did you have, Paul? Uh, usual uh, lower boots uh, offer. I'm, I must contact uh, Tim Kington at uh, the distributors for lower to make sure that's still going because it won't, won't last forever. So um, yeah, uh, there's a 20% discount from their walking boots and, and shoes, uh, lower, lowa.co.uk, uh, discount code HW20. Um, but I will just check in with Tim and see how long that's going to last. His generosity won't last forever, that's for sure. No. Uh, I think that's all I had. I've said thanks to Steve, the uh, website for show notes and links. Oh, yeah, and just one last thing. Um, some of you will have signed up for the Hidden Wiltshire newsletter, which I've been sending out weekly. Um, and I think I've got up to about 12 of those that have gone out, and they've been well read, actually, because um, I get all the numbers and stats on that. Um, but I'm going to shake it up a little bit and maybe not do it as frequently, just so we've got more relevant stuff packed in. So um, if you haven't seen it this week, it's not because you're missing out and I haven't sent it out. Um, I'm just having a rethink about that. So the next one will come out probably within the next couple of weeks, but it will have a bit more um, news packed into it. Be honest, Glenn, you've got nothing to say, have you? <laughs> I've always got something to say, Paul. You know me. That's very um, true. But I want to preserve it, and I want to make sure I don't run out of things to say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that That will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. I must admit, I, I enjoy reading those, because I don't know what's going to be in them. and It's, uh, it's, no. it, it's, it's really sort of... <laughs> I do actually look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've had some quite good feedback from that, so I'm quite pleased with how that's gone. But yeah, brilliant. Okay, so where are we going to be in two weeks? Uh, have we decided. Well, I think are we are we doing the coffin trail. Is that two weeks or? Is yeah, it... we can do the oh. coffin trail between the two Ashton villages, West Ashton and Steeple Ashton. Um, and I think we're going to try and do an outside broadcast for that one as well, aren't we? Yeah, we will do if we can get things lined up. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, we'll do something anyway outside because. Um, um, we need to get out there again with those microphones and have some fun. Yeah, yeah. And I think if if the stars are aligned, we might be able to interview somebody. But uh, yeah, more of yeah. that anon. Yeah. Okay. Well, everyone, thanks for listening and um, sticking with us. And we will be back in two weeks' time. Goodbye. Ta-da.